Hi everyone. Welcome to the Practical Gardener. I have done a Cattleya care video on this channel. So uh, that video is pretty detailed on Cattleya care. Given that I already had these three beautiful uh, plants blooming, I thought I'll quickly walk you through this and I'll also give you a quick care tips as well. So starting from here, I have two miniatures blooming here. So this one is the miniature orange uh, blooming. So I don't remember what the name is. This one here is the typical corsage. It bloomed about eight days back, I think March 22nd to be exact. It has given me a lot of joy and this really looks like that authentic corsage orchid and this variety is called the snow white variety and apart from these huge blooms you can see you can compare the size of the bloom with my palm it's almost as big as my palm size of the blooms the pristine white of the blooms uh, as well as beautiful fragrance so uh, this orchid has everything going for it and white is my favorite color in orchids i keep buying a lot of white orchids i have white cattleyas uh, blooming in the past as well but the lip has been of a different color it's been a pink lip or a yellow lip etc so this one uh, has been a pleasant surprise that way this one has an interesting name again a miniature amongst the cattleyas it's called why not and we say why not when you are so beautiful red right red is a very uncommon color again in orchids of course you get orange and you get a very deep dark purple but this color of red is uncommon i do have a cattleya i do have a vanda and a phalaenopsis in this color now cattleyas uh, have over like 100 different uh, species and multiple of hybrids available uh, in cattleyas. Cattleyas are sympodial orchids. So what are sympodial? They have multiple stems, right? In case of cattleyas, what they are uh, are actually pseudobulbs because uh, and why are they called pseudobulbs? Because they are these bulbs are above the ground and uh, they are not really bulbs. So that's why it's pseudobulbs. Uh, and in some cases, uh, these are also interchangeably used as canes. So Cattleya canes or Cattleya pseudobulbs. So one thing that I've also covered in the previous video as well is that Cattleyas always bloom on the new growth or new pseudobulb. I can probably show you in this example wherein you have this one, right? This is an old one which has already bloomed and finished. This also is an old one. If you can see the remnants of the old bloom and this is a new bloom like this is on a new growth or a new pseudobulb and you see this uh, thing here. This is called the sheath, the sheath of the flower and this is the sheath of the stem or the cane or the pseudobulb. You can remove it. I normally don't when there is a bloom already there but uh, if you remove these especially when they are brown like this. Uh, they are less likely to uh, invite insects or any other pests that may kind of get trapped in between the sheath. So it's all about aesthetics. I mean, uh, if you want, you can remove it. If you don't want, you can just let it be. Okay, so in terms of care, cattleyas are uh, orchids that require very bright light. And when I say bright, they really require bright light. I mean, phalaenopsis are supposed to be low light, medium light orchids. But put uh, cattleyas in the brightest part of your balcony. Uh, and they can even tolerate some amount of uh, direct sunlight. And the reason why you need this bright light is to induce blooms as well. The way cattleya growth cycle works is that uh, once say this bloom is gone right i mean this is already a day eight as i said it's already on the downward spiral so it might last me another say three four days maximum so once the bloom dies the next thing uh, what the plant will do is it will start giving out a lateral growth the growth will start as a round little growth which will then slowly elongate and that's called the nubbin of the cattleya and that nubbin will become a cane. Once the cane develops, it will develop leaves 
and then the flower spike that's the one that blooms so when the spike starts it will be closed it will be a closed spike like this and the stem of the flower will actually come through the spike so that's how these plants uh, bloom it's different in different varieties so if you see this you it looks as if it's a dendrobium bloom right i mean it's got a nice long cane uh, and then you have this blooming uh, other a very interesting fact about cattleyas is if you touch the stem there's a lot of sticky sap on the plant okay so this is supposed to be very very sweet and it is to attract pollinators but in cattleyas it's a lot more when compared to other orchids you don't see this in say a phalaenopsis or a dendrobium this very sticky sap that you see on the stem so going back to the care guide uh, light requirements very very bright light uh, make sure that they get a maximum light to be able to bloom but at the same time you need to strike that balance between not burning their leaves a good indicator that they are getting enough light is that the leaves leaves should be lighter green in color the if your leaves are very dark green in color it means the plant is not getting enough light to induce blooms in terms of watering these are orchids again that like to be well dried between waterings okay so use media that is extremely chunky you can use pine bark on its own or you can use pine bark charcoal for cattleyas especially and or even coconut husk uh, i typically don't use coconut husk because it uh, kind of disintegrates pretty quickly so pine bark and charcoal that way are a little long lasting uh, in terms of media now this media dries relatively quickly with cattleyas you can go without water till the media becomes completely bone dry and then water it very thoroughly and then uh, let it uh, dry completely again before you water it again so that's the kind of schedule that uh, cattleya is like of course this changes by season so for instance in summer you probably are watering them a little more often than you would do uh, in winter Uh, about fertilization given that at any point they are going through some kind of a growth cycle you need to be able to fertilize cattleyas without any break right they don't go through a winter dormancy of course there are some species that go through it so you can um, uh, you know keep fertilizing on say a weekly weekly kind of a schedule so what i do normally is uh as the plant is growing i give it a balanced fertilizer and as i see that the new pseudo bulb is kind of maturing that's when i move to a uh high blooms fertilizer uh, which is uh, rich uh, in phosphorus and uh, potash so that they can induce more flowers okay so this is really about care i haven't seen much uh, best problems with cattleyas okay i uh, hang them most of the time uh, because i feel that this is one orchid that does a lot better by hanging so it likes to grow its uh, grow laterally through its rhizomes and new growth comes in and uh, when uh, and uh, that's much better when you are hanging the plant okay so that's uh, that's what works for me okay so this is really about cattleyas and the care tips these beautiful corsage orchids with a wonderful fragrance they look so spectacular no wonder they have been called the queen of flowers okay so and before phalaenopsis became such a rage uh, and uh, became a, a florist favorite cattleyas were uh, the ones that were most popular and famous so uh, they still have their charm and uh, uh, probably only because their blooms don't last as long at phalaenopsis uh, they are not as popular anymore but that just doesn't take away from their beauty if you were to ask me uh, amongst phalaenopsis and cattleyas which has more uh, dramatic blooms i would you know hands down say the cattleya so that's cattleya for you i hope you can find these these are lovely uh, orchids collectors items so do add them into your collection Thank you so much bye